The opinions expressed on this program are solely those of individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of either Spectrum Generations or Time Warner Cable. Mature Lifestyle is made possible by Knowlton Hewins Roberts Funeral Homes and Cremation Service. Our homes are warm and welcoming, and we take care of you and your family like we would our own. Call us anytime. We are here for you. Hello and welcome to Mature Lifestyle. Spectrum Generations is so pleased to bring programs that help us live, laugh, and learn. And today we're going to learn something that is delicious. Uh, healthy aging and good nutrition. It just seems like such common sense, but it seems to be talked about more than ever now as we're understanding even more why food is really important to our, the, what we put in also determines our healthy aging. So I've got two experts here and looking forward to hearing from them. And we have a woman with a very interesting name and maybe she'll tell us about that too. Mm -hmm. Her name is Dimsey Clark and she's the registered dietitian down at St. Andrew's Hospital, their uh, Lincoln County Healthcare Center. So she'll talk to us a little more about that, but she knows a lot about nutrition. She's brought a colorful plate we'll talk about too. And it's making me hungry, I know she can can't see it, but I can. <laughs> and then I have Chris Teague, who is relatively new to Maine, but you've been working at Spectrum Generations, I think, for, since 2000. Uh, late 2012, late yes. Late 2012. So you're new, but you know a lot. You're well educated. <laughs> you know a lot about uh, being a chef and uh, you in the hospitality business. And that's part of it, isn't it? Food is presentation, I would think. Absolutely. Whether you're young or old or whatever it's else. Every bit. Is every bit. So sure. first, I'm going to go back to Dempsey, and I want you to tell me a little bit about you. How did you get into your job, and what made you so interested in uh, good nutrition? I think you were a home economics teacher at one point, so maybe you started <laughs> way back there. <laughs> well, my name is Dimsey, which is a nickname. Okay. And uh, I was named after my grandmother, and it was much easier to be known as Dimsey than uh -huh. my proper name. So what is your proper name? Dimarees. Oh, that's beautiful. It's, it's a, a very, family name. It's a very old family name. All right, and, but uh, now you're Dimsey. We uh, can call I'm you Dimsey. that. Now I'm Dimsey, yes. <laughs> and uh, I've been in the field of nutrition for a long time. I actually started out uh, in university in um, clothing and textiles and really? then kind of decided that I preferred the nutrition piece of it uh -huh. and then when I taught school I taught home ec I was uh, doing the nutrition piece sure and that led into um, becoming involved with the hospital work that led into doing a lot of work over the years with uh, seniors mm -hmm. and working in nursing homes and long-term care facilities and have you seen a change in attitude a bigger oh, commitment to the good nutrition. Could you talk to him about it? Well, in the beginning, it was very, um, I will put it stiff and starchy. Okay. Everybody <laughs> was on uh, therapeutic diets yeah. and it, it was horrible. <laughs> and uh, That hospital food that, that we all that remember so well. That awful hospital food, yes. And uh, no one took into consideration age or the fact that it was their home and that they should still have choices. And it gradually started to liberalize. And I was consulting at a um, nursing home in Bar Harbor called mm -hmm. Summit House. Mm -hmm. And uh, the director of nurses approached me about this article on liberalized geriatric diets. And my first impression, the first time she presented it to me, I was thinking, oh my goodness, um, this, this wouldn't be good at all. <laughs> and, uh, Change is a frightening thing, isn't it? It when was, we've done because something, it was so different. It's so different. And well, then, how was it so different? Well, because they had choice, we weren't going Before to dictate. Before you just told them, this is what dictated. you get for lunch. And everybody was on a calorie diets or very restricted sodium diets or they were on, you name it, they were on it. Okay. And this whole idea was you were on a regular diet. If you had diabetes back in those days, it was called a no added sugar diet was okay. the liberalized version. And then if you were on a sodium restriction, um, it was suggested that uh, you'd use no added salt. So you would look at Chris and I, if we were patients there, our residents, residents, <laughs> residents there, and we would have different needs. Yes. And so the liberalized version would say, okay, this is what you need, this is what she needs, you don't have to eat the same thing. That's is right. that the idea? Yes. <laughs> so when we approached I can't believe it, we didn't do that before. <laughs> oh, I know. It was horrible. When, so when we approached it the second time, it was like, 
yes, this is what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. And we were the first nursing home in the state of Maine to Give do choice. that. And uh, we had to work with the state and have the state accept it because they were resistant at first. And then a few years later, I attended a meeting in Waterville, I think. And they were talking about this new liberalized program, and I was sitting there thinking, yes, I started that. You started that. And but now it originally it's, now it's started the, now in Now everybody does it. Yes. Now everybody and, does it. And uh, I've done some programs on um, liberalizing the geriatric programs. And um, uh, it's so important to l allow them to have choice and to look at the individual needs of that person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we still have to do it regardless of whether they're um, younger and at home and able to uh, do whatever they want and care for themselves, or if they're in a facility of some type in senior, uh, a senior uh, living situation. Right. And Do you also allow, and this is nutrition part because it's having mm -hmm. people enjoy what they eat, not only choice, but most hospitals now have what they call room service mm -hmm. so that you don't have to eat when somebody plops the tray in front of you right. at a certain time when you're not hungry, you but you're able to order. to eat when you are hungry. Right. Even though they have the notes about sodium restricted or whatever that right. applies to you. Yes. So that's a part of this trend to re be respectful of well, people's needs. Well, it is. Needs. And I've worked... Um, very hard in the long-term care situation to uh, have all of this liberalized and to be able to meet their needs but meet them in a in a way that uh, that they're happy about exactly. it and they don't feel as though someone's controlling their life. Is it harder for institutions to do it that way? Other, before it, it depends was, yeah. upon whether I would say now it's less difficult because, they've learned. because we're learning about the changes in the culture. And probably you're not wasting as much food either. And definitely not <laughs> wasting the food. But there are still some people, there are still some physicians who don't like the idea of liberalizing because there's a, an element of control that's lost. Oh, yes. <laughs> so um, I really push for it. Okay. And uh, I've pushed in some cases that sometimes I've pushed really hard. <laughs> well, great. Well, I'm going to come back to you in just a minute, yes. Dimsy, because I want to make sure Chris gets in the game here. <laughs> First of all, you're taking many of the things that she's talking about and making sure that they use this, these new ideas mm -hmm. about nutrition at Spectrum Generations and the centers around the state. Could you talk a little bit about how you're doing that? Well, we, uh, we are fortunate enough to have a, a, a dietitian that volunteers for us. Her name Hi. is Ann Bo. So uh, every quarter we create menus that we're going to serve in our centers and both to our uh, Meals on Wheels uh, recipients. We give it to her and she applies a lot of the, the ideas that you just talked about, as well as the, uh, the guidelines that we're required to follow with uh, right. no added sodium, no added fats. And uh, we're able to do that uh, m largely in part due to our We Sustain Maine program just because of Talk work. about that a little bit. What is the We Sustain Maine program? It's, our, uh, it's an award-winning nutrition program that was uh, started at Spectrum Generations before I began there. Right. Uh, but it's something to be very proud but of. But you're glad that they started I'm it, I'm very you? glad. We had a goal. We met our goal last year of 25% uh, of all of our food comes from Maine. Oh, that's I good guess. for both the person who eats the food as well as our farmers, so mm -hmm. great. Uh, this year's goal is 32% for 13, or wow. 2013. and that's a realistic goal, right? Mm -hmm. We're well on our way there. I think we're just at almost 30% for the year do so far. Do you um, have special arrangements with local farms and that sort of thing, or you just go to farmer's markets? Mm -hmm. How do you do that? We do. We receive a lot of donations. Uh, the farmers, fortunately for us, will just uh, they'll either go through United Way or they'll go right. through the food bank and drop food off at our centers as well. Wonderful. Um, and then we have a deal with a, a local food purveyor that helps us. They track all of our purchases for us, so it helps us keep track of that. So. And through that program, you can get. Talk about the kinds of things you can get that are special from Maine it's and really, delicious. <laughs> it's really exciting for me as uh, having a chef uh, background in that we're able to serve seasonal vegetables. Yes. Um, we received a grant that gave us uh, an expansion to both of our main kitchens so we can now freeze those seasonal vegetables after That's the flash them. freeze thing mm -hmm. so that you keep the nu nutrients involved. Absolutely. So that gives our consumers, our customers, if you will, a choice. And the food, uh, uh, you know, the science proves that we believe it, that it's, it's more tasty and it's better for the consumer as well. Oh, that's great. So tell me some of the types of foods you, you do. Beets, well, I assume. <laughs> beets we do. We receive a, an alarming amount of blueberries at certain points in time. Oh, yummy. Uh, I say alarming because I'm not from here. But, but because you can flash freeze, you can have them year-round. Oh, absolutely. So, okay, so you have them fresh in season, mm -hmm. but you also have Maine blueberries year-round. They're round. delicious. What else is uh, so we get good a lot from of, Maine? A lot of summer squash, a lot of fall squash, pumpkins, uh, butternut yes, squash yes. from the farmers. 
Uh, we see a lot of uh, zucchinis. I guess that's a squash as well. <laughs> Do you know there's a joke in Maine that the, if you don't, the reason people in Maine lock their cars is to keep their neighbors from putting their extra zucchini in it <laughs> as a gift. <laughs> so you have to be careful with zucchini. <laughs> but what else? Uh, so we're able to do that and we're, through the grants we're able to expand our kitchens, I think I said that, but we also got a lot of new equipment that allows us to steam those vegetables, to freeze yes. them rapidly to keep the nutrients intact. And that uh, not only do you have to make the food nutritious for the, the seniors and the uh, older adults, that has to taste and look good too, so they're driven to eat it and know that that's what they're not only supposed to be eating, but they want to eat it, like I said. So. Um, we're able to do that. It's been a, a booming success, and I'm very excited about it. Have you found that your seniors at the centers have favorites? There are certain things that they clamor for? <laughs> we do. That you've learned to cook just for them? <laughs> we do, and they're very vocal in their opinions. <laughs> I bet. Um, we put out a newsletter about a month ahead of time with the menu for the next month. So they, they look at that, and they're very... So you can um, tell by the attendance when you've hit a home run, right? <laughs> yep. And they know, like today, for instance, at the Cohen Center, they're going to go, and they're going to get their beef stroganoff. And, uh, and that's they're afraid. very yes they're excited about it okay and so you you plan these menus mm -hmm. and the seniors know ahead of time yes. and they're sort of voting with their feet by coming out in numbers to eat your good food they do and we poll them as well okay so we well stay tuned we're going to be back with some more great tips for healthy aging with good nutrition yes he's still on his feet he's in throws it up yes by Leonard, rebound back and forth. The Maine Printful Association 2012 champion. It's the sports category on TWC TV On Demand. Topics that complement your lifestyle. The sports category on TWC TV On Demand. Check it out on Channel 950 or Channel 1. Spectrum Generations. Live healthy live well. Get answers. Get connected. Spectrum Generations. Specializing in the art of aging. Life should be celebrated. It's a special day when family and friends gather together to celebrate the life of a loved one. A celebration of life helps us honor our loved one and keep our memories alive. Whether you're planning a traditional funeral, a creative celebration of life, or a blend of both, at Knowlton Hewins Roberts, we are truly committed to meet the personal and unique needs of you and your family. Knowlton Hewins Roberts. Visit us online or visit our two locations in Augusta and Winthrop. Welcome back to Mature Lifestyles. Today we're having a great discussion about healthy aging and good nutrition. And we have two experts here and they have taught me so much already. I'm going back to Dimsey Clark, we have, I'm Dimsey Clark, and then we have Chris Teague. Both of them are experts here in this area and they're sharing it with us and they're making it fun. <laughs> but I'm gonna go back to Dimsey now because she has a plate here that's intriguing me as well as making me hungry. So Dimsey, we're, as we're thinking about healthy aging and chronic diseases and various things, tell us how this plate plays a role in what we should be choosing. And is this for old people only, or elderly people, or kids, or for everybody? How's it different? Well, everyone probably remembers the pyramid. Well, yes. the pyramid was ditched, and we pyramid's now have, gone. We now have the plate. Plate. The plate makes a lot more sense because we eat off a plate. We don't eat <laughs> off a pyramid. And uh, this is for everyone. For everyone. But there has been um, a plate that's been developed for. Uh, seniors oh, okay. for senior adults. So this is a plate for everyone, but there's yes. a special thing for and seniors. And that has a couple of added elements to it. Okay. Uh, one is the knife and fork on either side, and that that is to encourage people to sit down and have their meal. Why is that important? Well, I know it we is. We have but... a lifestyle that's on the go, mm -hmm. and that's not always the best thing in order to make good choices and to sit down and enjoy family or to enjoy friends. So the idea is to plan your meal, to sit down, to enjoy it. Maybe there have been one or two extra people to help prepare the meal and then to sit down and to enjoy it instead of 
doing it on the run or stopping at fast food places. Or while you're standing at the kitchen counter or something like <laughs> Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well, Chris, you see that every day. Seniors enjoy coming to the yes. centers because they sit together at the tables using this knife and fork. Yes. So food not only is nutritious and healthy, but it's more than that, isn't it? Do you see that? Absolutely, and it's actually part of our mission statement as, a, as an agency as well. So we, we call them community centers, we call yes. it community dining. I think the, the government calls it congregate dining, but uh, the community, you can really see it in their face when they come in. They're, they're, they're excited to be there, they're seeing each other. Right. They're, afterwards, they're playing games, they're you know, singing a song. So, so it's the nutrition, it's the camaraderie, mm -hmm. it's also appreciating it's all of these things. It's amazing how the appetite increases when people are eating in groups. And enjoying themselves. And enjoying, because to prepare a meal for one and to sit down yeah. and eat it al it's alone, it's not you fun. You don't do it. People, you watch people, TV or whatever. The old, <laughs> um, I was gonna say in the old days, but a while back we used to call, well, this lady just had tea and sauce or toast and sauce. Yeah. So they'd have a cup of tea, a piece of toast, yeah. and some applesauce. That was it. And that was their meal. It was easy to prepare and they could eat it alone. Well, that's not nutritious because we need Missing to eat. Missing a few things from your plate. Right, we need to eat from all the food groups. It and probably not, wasn't even a whole grain toast. Right, <laughs> and not eliminate any one food group. Okay, well, let's talk about these food groups. The pyramid's gone. We have pyramid's a plate gone. with a knife and a fork. Yes. And you said there's special things for seniors. Are there things other than the knife and fork? Exercise. Exercise. Which isn't on this plate, but it is. Um, but that's part of. Part of making healthy choices and a healthier lifestyle. Okay. And with the plate, regardless of age, half of the plate should consist of fruits and vegetables. It's always better to use fresh, but then if there's uh, very strict limits in budget, there's frozen. Right, and, and sometimes a, in Maine particularly, things are seasonal and sometimes yes. fresh fruit can be out of your budget. Or fresh vegetables. Or fresh vegetables, but you can do the fast Frozen ones, or fresh frozen, yeah. fresh frozen, flash you can frozen. Go to seniors, <laughs> right. spectrum generations, or and have you a can, wonderful and meal. And buy in season, of course, as yes. well. Absolutely. And then the other half of the plate is divided in half, so that um, one a quarter of the plate is the protein foods. So it'd be lean protein items: meat, fish, poultry, cheese, or uh, protein alternatives like beans, peas, and lentils. Mm -hmm. And the other quarter of the plate is uh, the grains and the grains would be we encourage that at least half of the grains that people eat are whole grain <laughs> and not uh, and not just white bread or white pasta so it's so important for a person to eat from the whole uh, the whole plate and not to eliminate a food group so is every meal supposed to look like that not not quite but a variation <laughs> of it because if you think of breakfast yeah you might choose to have an um, egg. An <laughs> egg. You could choose Whole to have, toast. or it could be, uh, oh, and I forgot the dairy. Dairy is here yeah. too. Um, and okay. in the, uh, the uh, plate for the uh, seniors, I believe it has a glass, a glass of milk there because it is important to have. And that's important for seniors to have milk. Yes, because of the calcium. Well, let's talk about, I'm going to come back to your plate mm -hmm. again, but we were talking a little earlier off camera that in addition to eating the balanced foods, there's some issues about supplements. People worry, and particularly women are always told about osteoporosis, getting enough calcium, et cetera, et cetera. Talk to us a little bit about what's important to supplement or not our diet. It's really important to eat the food and not to rely on a supplement. Much more important to yes. eat these. And also, uh, but There is nicer. kind of a quote that says, more is not better. Oh, I should remember and that And whole one. food is the best whole food because what we're seeing with all of the um uh, the literature now is and the, the big studies that are done and these are large studies with thousands of people that supplements use of supplements is not doing what they thought it would do and is actually increasing risks and causing problems for people so it's best to get your calcium from food it's best to get your vitamin c and your um, uh, vitamin A from food and may not be taking supplements. And the money that can be saved- uh, Could be put into the fresh fruits <laughs> and vegetables. Absolutely, they figure that some people are $20 a month minimum on oh, supplement. supplements. Well, what about vitamin D for uh, bones and 
Vitamin, there's a lot of controversy about vitamin okay. D. <laughs> And um, so you should probably listen what is to your the doctor. Recommend, what is the recommendation for vitamin D? There are other groups that are saying that it's too low and it's very important to have more. It also depends upon where you live. Okay. Uh, we live in an area where there's less sunshine, as so we've seen lately. <laughs> right. And uh, uh, people aren't getting out. We've been really uh, pushed to uh, limit our exposure to the sun, though a small amount is important. And the studies are showing that um, vitamin D and, vit and uh, calcium together are not making a huge difference in the older person who has uh, strong bones. So um, it's pretty individual. Healthy. You so should probably talk to your doctor, right? Yes, but, yes, and or try to yeah. have it from food. Exactly. Most importantly is the food, yes. which is what we're talking about, the good nutrition today. Mm -hmm. uh, one other topic which comes up as we age, sometimes we get chronic diseases, and you talked about maybe diabetes or some heart diseases that would have some limitations on it. How can how you do this at the center? You mm -hmm. try to make sure people who need low sodium diets, do you, can they have that with you? And Absolutely. Well, so we, what do you do to season low sodium diets so they <laughs> taste good? There's a lot of trickery involved. In it. Good, a, a share lot of a little it, of that. A lot of it is making the food look as good as possible. Appearance, um, okay. Absolutely, and we do use things, uh, we're allowed to use vinegar, we use vinegar a little bit, okay. it doesn't have a lot of... There's uh, substitutes that give yeah. some kick. <laughs> the acid does the same thing on the tongue, tongue that the salt okay. does. Okay, so, uh, well that's good to pepper know. pepper does that as well. So, Pepper and vinegar, mm -hmm. okay. And then we keep the fat down. We don't do fry. We don't fry things. We don't do a lot of saute items where there are where there's a lot of oil involved. There's right. a lot of roasting, steaming. Right. Um, you know, we have salads with fresh vegetables. So there's a lot of raw involved with that as well. Uh, we don't serve sugary drinks. Uh, we serve milk. So right. All so of our, so you create the healthy choices. And absolutely. Frankly, that sounds good for everybody, whether you're sodium restricted or not. It sounds delicious it what you're doing. Sure does. I and like I'll, your idea of trickery because <laughs> it does work. You learn new ways of making a food delicious. Right. And you present it the same, and it looks pretty on the plate, doesn't it? Do you add some herbs and spices to some of the foods? We do, and during oh, the yeah. summer, as uh, well, I came in late uh, in the year last year, but we had fresh some ones. some fresh herbs come in. It's really great. The big box full of basil or thyme. And on in. that note, mm, <laughs> we should get ready to go have lunch with you soon. And thank you both for being with us. And please stay tuned. We have the president of Spectrum Generations who has some very timely news for us about what's happening that affects us. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Spectrum Generations. Live healthy, live well. Get answers, get connected. Spectrum Generations, specializing in the art of aging. Excuse me, begging your indulgence, sir? I'm a wealthy foreign dignitary. And I would like your help moving a vast sum of money into this country. I, I would let you keep most of it, but I would like to have some of it back, too. Please take this certified cashier's check as a portion of the transaction. Get lost. Scams like these don't work as well in person. That's why most of them are done online. Welcome back to Mature Lifestyles. We are so pleased to have with us today the president and the CEO of Spectrum Generations, Jerry Queeley. Jerry comes bearing news, big news, from Washington in terms of how actions in Washington are going to affect Maine, particularly Spectrum Generations. And uh, you not necessarily have the nicest of tasks ahead of you, but we need to know. So would you share with us what yeah. we can look forward to? <laughs> well, I don't think it's, to look, it's nothing to look expect forward to. Expect what we can expect. Uh, but thank you for having me on, Libby. Um, as a lot of people know, um, sequestering is, took effect last Friday, which basically means the government has to, by law, now cut somewhere in the neighborhood of over a course of a fiscal year, which actually began last October, Correct. somewhere between five and six percent of federal spending across all departments. Right, it's across the board. All They're agencies. not looking at what could be cut, what should be cut, but just everybody, the good, the bad, and the indifferent get Ex cut. <laughs> absolutely, and one of the things that get cut is the Older Americans Act. Okay. And the Older Americans Act 
is um, is 30 some odd years old, um, has been flat funded for the last uh, 10 years, and it is now going to get cut for the last six months of this fiscal year about nine percent in wow. order to get retroed back to, to the beginning, of, the beginning that of, fiscal of the fiscal year. year. And the things that will get cut are outreach services for the aging and disabled in the Older Americans Act, health and wellness for senior citizens. Is that the nutrition type program? No, health and wellness is more of like um, teaching people how to live okay. better. Like um, we held classes, evidence-based classes on matter of balance oh, or right. living well and Very so forth, diabetes prevention. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No problem. Um, family caregiver support will be cut and also nutrition will be cut, um, which includes community dining and Meals on Wheels oh my for seniors. Um, and that's so, going to impact Maine too, right? Absolutely, it is a, it's going to, not only if it will affect how Spectrum Generations and the other area agencies on aging do their jobs, but the real impact will be the services that seniors receive. Um, for the first time, we believe, we, we are planning, that Spectrum Generations will now have a waiting list for Meals on Wheels. And that hasn't been, you've been able through volunteers and donations to try to keep up, but not now. Correct, so a 9% cut doesn't allow And you us. probably see a greater need right now because we've been in a bad economy. There are probably more people who need your services, not less. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's, no one is doing well, right. especially seniors in central Maine in this economy. So we could potentially see a waiting list for meals? A waiting list, uh, we will, we currently deliver meals two days a week, but we may, and then, so there would be two hot meals. This is our normal schedule is two hot meals, and we provide three uh, frozen meals. Right, so that they can use them when you're not there. In order to make bu budget, um, budgetary requirements, we will probably only do now one delivery a week, which is one hot meal and, f and four frozen. Oh, oh. Uh, we don't have the luxury that Washington has. We have to pay our bills. Exactly. We can't just roll a deficit. Right. And so we have to do today what we're given today to meet our, so we're given certain federal dollars and we have to meet the mission with those dollars. And if you can't serve everybody with your limited dollars, you just have to say, this is it. This, this is, is all it. we can do. We're, I mean, we're looking at reducing staffing levels in our outreach programs looking at um, our family giving programs, our health and wellness programs, which it's an impact to staff, but it means that seniors and disabled adults right. will not be able to access services as quickly as they right. have come to um, expect. I know you don't like to be the bearer of bad news, but you're being honest with Maine people so that they can know what to expect. Is there anything people can do about these concerns? I'm sure people well, in Maine are there's concerned. There's a couple of things. I will say that we have a very good congressional yes. delegation who understand what that means to their uh, citizens. Absolutely. I, I mean, Senator Collins sits on the aging committee, subcommittee for in the Senate. Um, both uh, Representative P Pingree and Representative Michaud have always been very good there for you. to senior citizens. And uh, Senator King has indicated his He'll willingness to work. And with that note, that's what you should all do. This is our life. It is our seniors. So thank you, Spectrum Generations, for letting us know what's happening. And thank you for joining us on Mature Lifestyle. Mature Lifestyle is made possible by Knowlton Hewins Roberts Funeral Homes and Cremation Service. Our homes are warm and welcoming, and we take care of you and your family like we would our own. Call us anytime. We are here for you. TWC TV, only on Time Warner Cable.